Good evening. My name is Cassie Chanin. Our next speaker is Mr. Sean Sovak. Mr. Sovak moved to Mumbai in 2005, where he co-founded Lighthouse Advisors India, a company that provides funds to middle market Indian companies to help them grow and expand. In 2005, he and his wife had no children. Today, they have two daughters that attend ASC and have lived their entire lives in India. He has previously served at WP Carey & Co, where he was a managing director and chief acquisitions officer, responsible for over $1.5 billion, that's billion with a B, of financing to companies across industries. Today in his speech, Talented Corporations, where one plus one is greater than two, he will tell us about the key ingredients that make a corporation talented, how to identify those ingredients, and the importance of doing so. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Sean Sovak. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. It's an honor to be here. Actually, when the ASB team asked me to speak at TEDx, I was so excited, and particularly on the topic, talented corporations. This is my livelihood. This is what I do for a living. And then they mentioned that I was going to be sandwiched between Prakash and Elizabeth, who are all about developing talent, changing the lives of hundreds of millions of kids, and making the world a better place. And I'm going to be talking about profiting from talent. <laughs> it was a bit awkward, but again, I am passionate about this topic. And do a Google search on talented corporation. It's interesting. Google comes back with nothing. So I'm now speaking on a topic that hopefully Google will now identify as a relevant topic in today's world, a talented corporation. Let me begin by asking a question. I need to know the first person that comes to your mind when I ask you this question in a blink. Think of a very, very famous, talented person. Bang. I wonder who came to your mind. I asked my team this, and I asked other people I bumped into, and Often the answer was a musician, a famous musician, a Bono, maybe a world-class athlete, Sachin Tendulkar or Babe Ruth, uh, an artist, Picasso. One or two of you may have said Bill Gates. He's pretty talented, built an incredible corporation, I would argue a talented corporation. Steve Jobs is a hot topic of the day with all that's happened over the last few years with Apple and iPad. But what about the rest of these incredibly talented individuals that probably don't pop into your mind as easily as a Picasso or a, a Babe Ruth, that maybe they should. They're truly incredible, pioneering individuals that built incredibly talented corporations. Um, I think corporate leadership gets under-recognized for being talent factories. So on today's topic of a talented corporation, what do I look for, what are the criteria, what do I think about when trying to assess it, let me actually start with a few general observations. One's going to be what I don't look for. And the ASP crowd's not allowed to give me a hard time about this tomorrow when I come to talk to them about prepping my daughter for the SATs. My daughter's six years old, by the way. But I'm going to ask a question. I may have given a clue here. Tell me a common theme about these great, talented individuals that created great, talented corporations. No college education. Or if they have a semester or two, they've dropped out. A lot of them have no formal college education. Some of them don't even have a high school education. I do not think college pedigree creates or determines a talented corporation. Probably one of the last things I look at when trying to figure out if that's a company I want to invest of and be part of. I don't look at college pedigree. Another myth I want to break is I want to, you know, a talented corporation is one that just grows and grows and grows. That's not true in my mind, in my world. This is an Indian infrastructure company. It, in four years' time, it grew its revenue 4x. Wow, it must be a talented corporation. Look at the share price, the red line. If I gave this company a dollar five years ago, it'd be worth 50 cents today. I would argue that is not the hallmark of a talented organization. So I'm not looking for college pedigree. I'm not looking at revenue just for the sake of revenue. So what do I look for? What's interesting? What do I think sort of defines or can begin to define or hint at a talented corporation? This date is one symbol. This is the date that GE was founded. 
Today, GE is one of the most valuable corporations in the world. Here is a talented corporation founded by Thomas Edison, who was on the previous page, without a real college education, that survived over 100 years, survived the world wars, ups and downs, and today is one of the most valuable companies in the world. Another way I think about a talented company is this. $60 million, $230 billion, starting in 1986. If this doesn't, no one, recognizes this, what this actually is, Microsoft's market cap. So Microsoft went public in 1986 and was worth $60 million. Today it's worth $230 billion. It survived the test of time, didn't survive, it flourished over those succeeding decades. To me that's a hallmark of a talented corporation. Since you know the metrics, I'll just put up the numbers. How about this one? $6 million into $24 billion really a 4,000x increase in value, in market cap value. It's Infosys. It's our Microsoft of India. It's one of the great Indian blue chips and the first of many in my mind. So I'm not looking for college pedigree necessarily. I'm not looking for revenue growth necessarily. But I am looking for a talented corporation, which I believe is one that can withstand the test of time. What else am I looking for? Well, let me start with my background just a little bit. I, as I mentioned, I've been an investor for nearly two decades. Um, in particular, I now focus on finding the next Microsoft. I, try, I invest in what's called small and early growth companies. Not venture capital, not startup risk, but companies that have created something, they're selling something, and they need capital and hopefully a little uh, consulting and value add to help them achieve their full potential. Um, an investor, I have fiduciary responsibility. Someone gives me a dollar, they give it to me because they want $4 back in five years. If I don't invest in a talented corporation, I'm not going to fulfill my fiduciary responsibility. In the investment community, we're very, you know, we're big in the head. We love ourselves. We think we're very smart. We've got all these fancy words we throw out there to really think you're impressive and charge you all these fees. Return on equity, return on average equity, return on capital employed, earnings before interest tax, depreciation, amortization, weight average cost of capital. They're interesting. Tell me your initials. I bet you there is a, fin it's a financial acronym for something. <laughs> they, and it's important to look at, but I think it's actually not nearly as important as we think you have it, believe it is. Um, they're more of actually a snapshot of what the company has done in the past and not necessarily where it's going or what it's capable of. Particularly in my business, that emerging Microsoft. These ratios will look terrible. And that doesn't mean it's not a talented corporation. So to really think about what a talented corporation is, I think just simply applying typical financial metrics would be uh, doing a disjustice. Um, so, so then how am I thinking about what a talented corporation is? How am I measuring it? What lens am I looking through? It's going to be a, a bit of a word jumble here, but work with me on this. So I'm not looking at all these financial ratios. What am I looking for? Fundamentally, I think the output of a talented corporation is a corporation that can profitably and sustainably generate increasing amounts of cash with the same amount or even less capital. In simple words, I'm looking for businesses that generate cash and I don't have to keep funding them year and year to get the growth and get that cash back. I'm looking for businesses that generate cash and they do it on their own. I will, and you'll see why. I think that's a tenant of a very talented corporation. How do they do that? Very, ooh, that's very academic sounding. How do they do that? Ultimately, they do that by having a product or a service, an offering that you, the customer, is willing to pay for, probably pay a premium, hopefully pay a premium, and you're willing to pay me on time. It's a good business model. Let me speak by example. If I sell you a cookie today for 10 rupees and to get you to buy it next week, I have to give it to you for 8 rupees, that's not a good business model. It's going to go out of business, and I would argue that's not a talented corporation. Or if I sell you a TV, I say, don't pay for 10 years. Don't worry about it. That's the only way I can get you to buy that computer. I'm not a talented corporation, and it's not a good business model. I'm looking for businesses that are price setters, not price takers, and are self-funding. They go to that generating the cash, they can invest in themselves, and they continue to grow. So. How does this happen, these products and services? 
I'm going to the next layer of what I really look at when I assess a business to think of as a talented corporation. What is a product or a service? It's just the end result of what a bunch of people do. It is the people that create talented corporations. My business, the investment business, is not about fancy ratios, it's about people assessment. That's my job, and that's why I love my job. So when I go into a company and think if they have this capability to create these great products and innovative products and services that people are going to pay for that generate cash, what do I look for? Vision. Across the organization, I need to see that everyone's looking and heading in the same direction. If I see that one person's looking to the straight ahead, one's looking to the left, one's looking to the right, they're all rowing in different directions, I, don't, I think that's a real challenge. I think that corporation may not survive the test of time. I'm looking for passion. To be cliche, I'm looking for the fire in the belly. I can conquer the world and make a difference. I'm looking for energy, and generally that passion is driving that energy. You know, it's um, people with passion and energy, don't ask them how they're going to do it, but they can move mountains. And I think it's the hallmark of a talented corporation that has these institutionalized into the DNA of the organization. Let me speak by a quick example. The gentleman is Sheldon on the right with a nice tie on. Sheldon was a company, a gentleman I backed, an entrepreneur. Started the business in the early 2000s with just two lakh, about $5,000. No formal education, more than high school. He's sitting here at the table selling his, um, his business for a princely sum to a world-class multinational corporation, making a win-win-win for everybody involved. Very exciting. When he sold the business, had about 4,000 employees. Five employees to 4,000 employees in a very short time frame. Sheldon's probably one of the most passionate, energetic gentlemen entrepreneurs in India. What is he passionate about? Toilet bowls. He cleans toilet bowls. He owns a facility management business. He scrubs floors. There is no individual in India that's more passionate about cleanliness and delivering a world-class product to his customers, the malls, the hotels, etc. That's why, there's several reasons why, but that is one of the main drivers why this company invested and bought Sheldon. You also need curiosity. Absolutely, a talented corporation is talent. There's, there's curiosity. What's the competitor doing? How can I become obsolete? What can I do better? What's happening in the world? What are the disruptive forces in China or the US? And how's that going to impact me? There's got to be that culture of learning. There also needs to be innovation. And innovation is what can I do better? What can I provide that the customer doesn't even realize that they need yet? There has to be a culture of risk taking and rewarding risk taking, not failure. I was very, very fortunate in my early years of being an investor in investment training, I was in such an organization. You know, I made a few boo-boos early on in my younger years. I make a few today also, hopefully not too many. But, uh, you know, I'd go into my, uh, my boss and, I'm so sorry, this, this was the answer. Let's make new mistakes. Wow. How is that for sort of building confidence and building experiences and letting someone have the responsibility to learn? I was very privileged to be part of that environment in such an early part of my career. But I'm adding here with an exclamation point, a talented corporation has determination. You can have a lot of these other ingredients, but if you're part of a dynamic or organization, and even this, I think a lot of this is true for NGOs again, folks, you will fail, or your NGO will fail, or your corporation will fail, or it'll hit a roadblock. If you're in the NGO space, you may be a regulation on foreign donations, or a competitor, disruptive competitive action uh, that you have to deal with. Is yours the corporation that sort of gets right up? dusts off the knees, put a few band-aids on and runs the marathon, or sits there sort of just puzzled? A bit like a deer in the headlights, what am I doing? What, what, what's going on? Or do you get up and you get back into that race? You need to have determination. A quick example, let me tell you a little about this gentleman, Ashish. Ashish is out to change education in India, addressing a lot. Here's my little saving grace, hopefully you know, a little note that we actually back companies trying to do the good that uh, my, my fellow speakers are doing as well. Ashish was very, grew up in a very middle class background. Was, you know, parents were so proud of him going up through multinational corporations in India and then getting positions in senior roles in Paris uh, with some of the best fast, you know, consumer product firms in the world. So started to think about coming back to India and to Prakash's point said, oh, what am I gonna do for my kids' education? And they started talking to more people, became massively disheartened about the quality of education in India and had an aha moment and said, I'm going to fix that. Dropped everything, 
went to Harvard School of Education, studied at Howard Gardner, all the, educated himself with all the best educational practices, multiple intelligences, activity-based learning, and that's where he built his company on. But he failed. He didn't start this in 2007 where this chart began. He started in 2000, and he failed in terms of bringing mass change and reform. He started with a small teaching consulting business. And what he found was you would train someone or retrain them, and they go back to their old bad habits. Extremely frustrated, so they went back, they innovated, so they ended up dividing it devising a comprehensive educational solution that includes both teacher training and almost minute by minute, thousands of minute by minute lessons plans based on best in world class know-how and how you teach these topics and how you deliver it and how you manage the classroom and how you interact with students. He is doing this to change Indian education, but it's only because of determination and innovation. Now we're not educating millions of kids, but I hope Ashish does one day, and I expect that he will. Right now, he started in three schools, in 800 schools, 300,000 kids. He's changing their lives for five rupees a day per student. Determination, innovation, hallmarks of a talented corporation in my mind. So where does these attributes come from? Wave a magic wand? Just pull private equity money in and bang, and it starts to appear? Not the case. So I will say you do need to have the, like those ladies and gentlemen I started earlier in the presentation of the slide. You do need to have talented leadership. Um, and this a leader that we look for is I'm invest, about to invest in a company or not. Does this leader motivate? Does she share the rewards? If I go to a company and the promoter, which we call the Indian entrepreneurs, if the promoter, if I go, well, how do you think about rewarding the team? Are you going to share some of the equity, some of the profits of the business? And he says to me, oh, no, 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 they don't, we don't need to do that. Major flag for us. I, it's very I-centric, a very me-centric business is what I would worry about. Even if it's got a great product, how long will that company endure? And again, a talented company, the one I need to back to deliver on my fiduciary responsibility, has to deliver again and again over time. So does this entrepreneur share? And does the entrepreneur embrace high respect, high conflict? It's a brilliant phrase one of my mentors and CEO council members, Ravi Chattaverdi, uh, you know, shared with me and we try to use and help identify, bring to our companies. High respect, high conflict. Wow. That's powerful. A talented organization, even an NGO or corporation, will embrace that. Disagreements, debates, contrarian point of views, respectfully, all for the greater good. But if you can instill this, if a leader can instill this in a corporation, I think you have the makings of a talented corporation. So as I wind down, what I'm looking for is this very talented leader could be a sign of a talented corporation. This ecosystem puts out more than goes into it. Where the ordinary achieve extraordinary, where the extraordinary achieve transformational. To me, that is a talented corporation. And again, just feeding back with these attributes that I screen for, I believe this team will then generate products and services that are world class, that people are willing to pay for and pay handsomely for. Therefore, the businesses generate cash. And if they're generating cash, I assure you they're generating shareholder returns. Coming back to what I do. So, sum it up very simply, I'm looking for businesses like that, no, excuse me, not like that, like this. I'm looking for businesses, talented corporations, where the resultant is far greater than the simple inputs, the summation of the inputs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sovak.